All right. So welcome, everybody. How are we doing? Great. No, you can do better than that. How are we doing? Great. That's uh, a little bit better. I think you may be sleeping. That's why we're going to talk about sleep. All right. So uh, tonight, we are going to go talk about sleep. We're going to talk about... Um, we talk about holiday stress busters. Uh, we do some different ones a along the way during the holidays, but I wanted to talk about sleep because it's a really important thing to me. I believe it's an issue for every single person that's sitting here right now. Now, you may be sitting here and think, hey, I go to sleep fine and I stay asleep, so I don't really think that I have sleep issues. But if you're going to sleep, then you might as well make it as good as possible, right? Some of you guys have health issues that you still have for one reason and one reason only because you still have 5, 10, 15 percent of sleep that's not as effective or efficient as it could be or should be and as a result of that you still have aches and pains, you still have a little bit of weight loss resistance, you still have maybe a little bit of high blood pressure uh, and we're going to go through a lot of those other things that you might have but that's still an issue and it's something as simple as just sleeping a little better. Does it make sense? Who would like to sleep better and get over the things that you may still have, right? Just from sleeping, which sounds way too good to be true but I'm going to show you how it's true tonight. So, start now. Love the picture, but if you think about it, we literally are the only mammal on the planet that actually uh, will delay sleep purposely. There, no, no, nobody else does that. Like, we literally will stay up on purpose. And it used to not be like that. Actually, if you think about it, a um, hundred years ago, or whatever, I guess a little bit more than that now, when there wasn't uh, electricity, when did people go to sleep? Yeah, not too long after the sun went down because we ate our food, we did whatever else. Uh, in fact, I'm going to show you a, a picture up here in a second, but when do, when do roosters know when to crow? <laughs> when the sun comes up. Do they, do they crow at the same time all year long? No, they crow at different times, which is why your rhythm of when you sleep is also different, and it's a little bit different this time of year, yes or no? Yes, yes is who here just recently loved that the government continued their uh, daylight savings times? And it's almost like you felt like, oh, we, we, got, we got one up on everybody because we have to sleep in, right? But who here felt more tired after daylight savings time? And so if, anytime you change your schedule, you will be more tired. We'll go through it, okay? Consequences of poor sleep. And there's just this high profile stuff. New York Times actually did a, did a piece that was called um, Dangerous Consequences of Insomnia. Uh, Heath Ledger, you guys know he was, uh, he was the Joker in Batman. He was also in Knight's Tale or something. I kind of like that better. It wasn't so uh, bloody and crazy. Uh, but super duper actor, great guy. It was during Batman, he was tra having trouble sleeping. And he told his producer he was only sleeping like two hours a night. And so he was turning to sleep aids to get more sleep. So he was extremely exhausted. He couldn't sleep. And on top of that, he was doing you know, a prescription sleep medication and it did him in. And uh, we'll talk about it tonight, but if you take sleep medication, I, this is for not just you guys here, we'll have tens of thousands of people watch this video on YouTube uh, and then around the world. If you take a sleep medication, and you can do your own research on this, if you only took 18 pills in an entire year, you are over 400% more likely to die of any cause. Now that's not, I'm not talking about if you took 18 prescriptions, if you took 18 pills, it is actually, it's more dangerous to take sleep aid medication than it is to be doing IV drugs under a bridge somewhere. Like it's, it is the most serious thing you could possibly do. And so that's another reason I want to talk about it. And there's just a complete, there's a tangled web that happens and ends up, the biggest thing I want you to get from that is what happens is people never fix the what? The root, the problem, the cause. They, people don't fix what's causing them not to sleep well, and they want to fix the problem. And as a result of them trying to fix the problem uh, or fix the symptom, they, they exist in a, like a narcotic gaze, and they start having a lot of other things become issues for them, and that's what has to stop. Does it make sense? We've got to fix the cause and the root. Um, but I want to show you this. Most people don't realize how many side effects that sleeping pills have. <laughs> he said, I want to get my own chair. So just, it's okay. Um, so, but here's the thing. Most people don't realize. Now watch this. These are the listed, scientifically validated side effects that the, the drug companies themselves have to, by law, show you that they have. And I want you to stay with me here. So here's the first 25, okay? Everything from anxiety, so now you're on other drugs, uh, withdrawal symptoms, abnormal sleep, 
shakiness. Here's another 25, including back pain. That might be important to know as a chiropractor. Um, you come in with back pain, it's caused by your medication. Anorexia, weight gain, blurred vision, personality disorder, seizures. Uh, here's another 50, how about this one? Abdominal pain, blood pressure, hypertension, tachycardia, leukopenia, um, vertigo, another one, um, loss of cognition. Here's another 50, um, decreased libido, uh, panic attacks, neuropathy, so you got numbness and tinglings. Uh, here's another 50, uh, chronic swollen lymph nodes, um, acne, blisters, uh, eye issues, urinary tract infections, cystitis. Uh, here's the last little bit. And what's the last one? Insomnia. Insomnia. So I take something to help me sleep and it actually keeps me from sleeping. Seriously, I'm not making this stuff up. But most people don't realize that that, two, that 202, that 200 second one, is in there. And let me tell you, that's a huge one. And that just happened recently to a friend of ours. Uh, his parent was taking uh, sleeping medication and ended up taking their life and uh, never really had those thoughts at all and then started taking the sleep meds and didn't realize it was, it was sleep medication induced. And so we want to do something different about it. And really just people don't realize that that little pill has so much causation there. And it's, it's always the last thing you ever want to do. No one wants to sign up for those 203 things, do they? Right? Nobody does. But the doctor doesn't tell you about it. Nobody gives you the sheet. No one shows it to you. And here's the thing I want you to get. Here's the everyday things uh, that poor sleep causes. And I think it's the biggest thing in this room. There's a lot more than it. Uh, but inflammation. So you guys that still have some joint pain, you guys still have some stiffness, right? You wake up and things are a little, still a little hurt or whatever else. Sleep. Simple as that just because you're not sleeping. Uh, joint pain, decreased immunity. Well, that might be something that you want to make sure that you're dialed in really good right now, right? The cold and flu season. Uh, weight loss resistance. I want to give you a study tonight that's going to blow your mind. Poor mental state. Right now, they say if you actually miss 15 minutes of sleep multiple times a week, that you are just as likely to wreck a car as somebody who's been drinking and driving, right? So you're, you're just as likely. So uh, it's actually, it's, it's studied. Uh, poor health overcome, poor performance. We're working with athletes in the Olympics. Do you see how important this is? And listen, I'm not talking to, listen, whoever's watching online right now, uh, I'm not talking just about the people who you know, you go, oh yeah, I've got sleep issues. I'm talking to every single person who doesn't think they have a sleep issue, that or thinks you're sleeping fine, but you're not actually getting to all the deeper REM sleep, and as a result, your body's not healing like it should, it's not functioning like it should, and you're having issues that are being brought up by it, and you don't even know it's the sleep. Make sense? Okay. Um, how do you know if this is you? Well, these are the nine things. Just look at it. Your blood pressure is starting to increase. You're having trouble remembering things. Uh, you get frequent colds. Why? Immunity's down. You sleep late on the weekends, right, because you're trying to catch up, right? Who here ever tries to catch up on the weekends, right? Again, uh, your blood sugar is having issues. Uh, the only people that I have trouble getting their, uh, their diabetes to completely reverse are people who ca I cannot get their sleep under control. They won't listen to me or they just have bad habits or whatever else. Uh, you can't shed those pounds. It's weight loss resistance. Consume caffeine. Why do you consume caffeine? You need to stay awake. Because I got to get jonesed up again, right? I can't walk around and be asleep. Can't stop hitting the snooze alarm, right? Don't have a snooze alarm, first of all, right? Why? Who invented the snooze alarm? Somebody that was having trouble with what? Sleep again, right? Uh, you're irritable and moody. Like, I can pick this one out, right? Uh, again, I talked about this already, but these are all the things. And that last one, seasonal affect disorder, right? Has anybody ever heard of that? It's pretty recently new. It was about 10 years ago. It started uh, being a diagnostic criteria in the, the DSM. But um, it's usually seasonal, which means it's when the light is not as much, so it's usually the winter months. And actually, it is a real thing. When you don't get as much light exposure to your body, your retina, to your uh, body, you actually, um, your mood centers or your uh, limbic centers, your brain, are not as heightened. Uh, so people that actually have a tendency to draw towards that, actually, in the wintertime, have some more blue days. And so it's a real thing. I think healthy people don't have any issues with it, but if you're a little bit have, have some health issues to begin with, then you'll probably have a little bit more seasonal affect disorder. I kind of like this. This is kind of funny. 
Take your time. <laughs> so someone just wearing lights around the head. Actually, what's interesting, there is actually um, treatment protocols for this, and there's like a little thing that you wear that's like a cap visor, and it's got light emitting uh, diodes, and so it just shines light on your face and your eyes, not directly into them, but on your face, and it actually really reverses seasonal affect disorder. I think it looks goofy as all get out, but it <laughs> seems to work. So if you need that, you could actually try to rig this up from Home Depot. Uh, here's something, actually I just read a study, I put this in here because I read a study, really good study, other than sunlight, uh, which you can't always get this time of year, you guys get off work and the sun's already down, is uh, your essential fatty acid ratios. Uh, really good study, like um, the people that actually had the worst seasonal affect disorder had the worst imbalances in their essential fatty acids, which means you're exposed to so some bad fats, fried foods. Uh, I had some people say, I never eat fried foods, and but they, they still tested really bad on their metabolics, like they were eating fried chicken every day. And guess what it turned out to be? They loved lattes, and it was heated half and half, which basically turns into rancid fats, and it, and it looked horrible. And, and it, it was actually because of of that. And so uh, some of you guys some of you guys are sitting there going, oh, don't take away my lattes. <laughs> but how do you how do you uh, counteract that? This is the time of the year that every single person needs to be taking this. Got it? Um, even if you're eating healthy, you have to have a good ratio of fatty acids and this is how you do it. Got it? This is how you get it back because this is this is what and again I people go, well you know what? I can actually get something cheaper at Costco. You pay what you get. You pay for what you get. Like Costco stuff, it's like 45 to 1. Again, I love Costco. They bless us all the time. Uh, let me just use Vitamin Shop or something like that. But it, the point is, you want a good, good supplement. This is how you get it. Okay? Um, some of you guys don't know about brain cy uh, cycles of sleep. How many cycles of sleep are there? Don't look. <laughs> there's four and then REM, so there's actually five. We used to think there was three, but there is actually five levels of sleep. It looks something like this. Okay, everybody look. So this is the depth of your sleep, okay? This is how deep you're sleeping. This is how long you're sleeping, okay? So about right here to here is when you're sleeping and your spouse goes <laughs> like this, right? I know that's nobody in here. They jerk, right? And then about here, they stop jerking as much, and there's just maybe some heavy breathing. And then once you get down to here, this is considered rim. And guess how much you move in rim? Nothing. Not much at all. Actually, if you'll notice, some of you guys have these. If you hit it long enough, mine will say sleep. And then you can go to bed, and uh, it will actually monitor your movements at night. And it will actually track how long at night that you go without movements and it labels that as REM and it's exactly right. And so you should have three to five um, pretty good REM cycles when you sleep. Three to five. Everybody asks me that, I'm going to tell you. But it's three to, good three to five. Now if you don't have that, there's a real issue. When you go into REM, that's when your nerve supply heals. Got it? This is why if you stay up, if you take anybody and they stay up too long overnight, they become psychotic. Right? They become crazy people. They've done studies on sleep where you do sleep deprivation and people start hallucinating and seeing weird things. It's because if you don't get REM here, your brain, your nerves don't heal. Right? That's an important thing to know. Okay? Now, moving on. How much sleep do you need? Eight. Eight, seven, six, seven to eight. It really is seven to eight. We live in a society today where most people are getting five and a half to six. Five and a half to six. If you're lucky. If you're lucky. Um, I can tell you this. If you get less than six, if you get f six or less, you are in a category where it increases your likelihood of death by, by it increases it two times. So you're twice as likely to die of any cause early if you're not getting six over six. And so it's, a, I want, I'm, again, I cannot be more serious. I'm not making a joke. This is important for you to get this. Can, and can you see why? My goal is to take care of you guys the rest of your life. But if I go in there and adjust you, and I get your spine amazing, and you get off medications, and you've lost a million pounds, and you feel great, and whatever, but you're still not getting the sleep thing in order, we're going to come up short. And that's not why you started here. Does that make sense? Right? So this is an essential. Um, this is why my kids, I, I'm like, is he still sleeping? Like, you know, my 13 and uh, 16 year old, they're like, I want to go, why are you sleeping so late? 
you know, but they do need more sleep, right? I want to hit some topics here. Uh, for instance, sleep apnea. Does everybody know what sleep apnea is? The diagnostic criteria is basically where you're uh, multiple times a night. It's not just snoring. It's where you actually stop breathing. And so the way they do in sleep studies is they actually put all the stuff on you and they count how many times an hour you stop sleeping. And I don't remember what the diagnostic criteria is. You stop breathing. Yeah. So you, however many times, that's when they diagnose it. Okay. Um, this is a forced air CPAP machine. And the way that it works is, in normal breathing, what ends up happening is air flows in mouth and nose. And this soft palate here is open so the air goes back. Okay. Um, but in obstructive sleep apnea, which is basically sleep apnea that people have, this soft palate here hangs back down low enough that the air hits that and it has to open it. And so you've got this flap of skin, the soft palate, hitting the back of the throat and then uh, air has to go through it and it goes like this. So it, go, it sounds like this. <laughs> Anybody? Now you're la why are you laughing? Because that sounded real. That's what that was. So how does this how does a forced air sleep apnea machine work is when you breathe in, it forces it so that uh, the reason that you end up stop stop breathing is you actually the soft palate becomes so flaccid that in your regular breathing pattern and in your depth of sleep that your breath isn't strong enough to get past the obstruction. And you stop breathing until your your body goes Hey, silly, wake up and you go <laughs> like this, right? And you, and you can either wake yourself up, but people die like that, which is why, and it's very few people die. It's not as, it's not as uh, severe and as um, critical as I think people make it, but it is a serious problem. And I think it's more of a serious problem because if you're not sleeping well and going through deep rim, because let me ask you a question. If you're sleeping like that, do you think you actually reach real deep rim very long at all? Not at all. And so you end up having cardiovascular issues and blood pressure issues and no one ever fixes it. Uh, can being overweight cause this? Yes. yes, soft palate, thickness of the neck, all the rest. But watch. Here's the other thing. That soft palate, you know the little hangy down thing in the back of your throat, the uvula? Well, there's a skin on either side of that, and that's the soft palate. That's the thing in the back of your throat. It's innervated by the nerves in the back of the neck, glossopharyngeal. This is, so if you remember the, the, the chiropractic that you guys started with, this is the neck, okay? So here's the neck, here's the curve. There's the front of the, the jaw, or the back of the jaw, there's the front of the head. The back of the head is this way, so you've got a good curve. That's what you're supposed to have. Now, when you have that, the spinal cord on the inside is relaxed, and the brain stem is very high. But if I lose the curve, if you'll remember, it stretches the spinal cord. So I want you to think about, think about this area right here being pulled down, okay? So if it pulls it down, then the brainstem and cranial nerves become compromised. And then guess what happens? Trigeminal nerve, again, I don't want to get too heady, but imagine the nerve being compressed to the muscles of the soft palate. And now when you go into REM sleep, watch this, even worse if I'm up on a pillow, right? and it stretches that down. Now what happens is I stretch that and then the nerve is compressed going to the muscle of the soft palate. Now if I decrease the muscle or the nerve spline of this muscle, it's not as tone. Would you, right? when, when I'm not contracting it, even when the nerve is going to it, it's not as tone. Right? So when I have a nerve supply that's compromised to the back of my throat and I go to sleep and I go into deeper and deeper REM, guess what happens to the tone of the soft palate in the back of my throat? It gets more flaccid. So it begins to sink back. And then I have this. That's why you can have this whether you're heavy, you're thin, you're lightweight, you're however you look. Does it make sense? Which is also why I had a guy not too long ago that came in, got adjusted, and in two weeks wasn't even uh, snoring anymore. He's off his CPAP. He's sleeping great. Uh, now, if there's other weight issues and medication issues that can be a part of it too, but the, can you see how this is so simply caused by just your neck oftentimes? Does it make sense, right? So next. Restless leg syndrome. Who's heard of that? Raise your hand. Come on, raise your hand if you've heard of restless leg, right? What's crazy is 20 years ago when I started practice, no one even knew what restless leg was. And the pharmaceutical company using it as an opportunity for marketing has now convinced the entire world that everybody has restless leg and everybody needs medications. Just like the whole um, bone density thing for women, you know, 30 years ago there was no woman ever even got their bones tested and nobody had an issue and they made a big marketing ploy. Now every single woman thinks that, you know, by law you have to have your bones checked and you need some kind of pharmaceutical drug to keep your bones healthy. When they, when, not to get too off track here, but they actually take every single woman based on a 30 year old woman's bone structure. And if you don't have a 30-year-old woman's density, then you're pathological and you need a drug. 
I digress. Restless leg. So now watch this. If you're subluxated or you have mineral deficiencies or you're dehydrated or whatever, can you see how you could have uh, that creepy crawly feeling or feeling like you need to move your legs at night? Right? It's very simple, right? Uh, a really easy one is mineral deficiencies. And when I was in school, there was a guy who um, did lots, of, he, was a, he was a bigger nerd than I was when it came to nutrition, but he loved doing research on what people were deficient of. And guess what he found out across the board every single time? There's a mineral, magnesium. Every single person is deficient in magnesium. And what's really interesting is when you put the average person on magnesium, they sleep better, even if they don't have sleep issues. Why is that? Anybody know? Because magnesium has a calming effect. It actually causes your nerve supply to relax. People with peripheral neuropathies, uh, numbness and tinglings, and things like this, that seems to relax those even before we can get your nerve supply completely corrected, and people do better and better at night asleep. Just to be honest with you, because I see a couple hundred people a day through the office, my bones get pretty tired, and, my, and it's a pretty taxing day. And so guess what I drink every single night without fail before I go to bed? Magnesium. magnesium. I take magnesium calm. I, uh, I take basically a full spoonful. So it's like a heaping tablespoon. I don't know what that is as far as milligrams. But it's a heaping tablespoon. Throw it in there. It, it uh, fizzes up kind of like the old Alka-Seltzer stuff. Fizzes up, makes it up good, and suck it back. And literally sleep like a baby. And I, ne I used to actually occasionally because I worked. Who here has ever been on your feet so long that you end up getting cramps? Anybody had that? Like if you've ever had a cramp at night, you've never forgot it. Like you, woke, like you went to bed the next night going, please God. Yeah. Yeah, twitching. What about your leg like moving involuntarily? Yeah, twitching. Yep. That's part of it. Yeah, twitching is part of it. It's part of it, right? Uh, but also just nerve supply can be that. Okay, but this, I put this in here. Uh, there's two different types. This is a liquid. It's a pro-magnesium formula. It o you only need a teaspoon of this stuff. And you just, like this. This is my, like, it's a, like, I think, I don't know if it's a tablespoon. So it's got both, yeah. It's got both calcium and magnesium. I like this one personally. Kim really likes this one. Um, I like sweet lemon, but my favorite is raspberry. raspberry. Yeah, it's, yeah, you can't beat that one. So I actually just ran out two days ago. And so if you're buying, mag listen, some of you guys get your, some of you guys wait all month long to get your product tonight because you get a 10% discount. Don't. I don't buy your magnesium until I get mine first. No, you can't. No, we, well, there'll be plenty of it. But just, just make sure you get it before you go. So um, weight loss resistance. Great study, Finnish study, over 7,000 women in a study that showed that if you actually um, had any issues with sleep, like if you lost, I, forget, I, I can't quote it perfectly, so don't quote, don't quote me. But I think if you lost 30 minutes of sleep once a week, that you were uh, more likely in the next six months to gain 11 pounds. Uh, and some of you guys just keeping weight on just from that alone. Does that make sense? So it's weight loss resistance. And here we go. Who would like to lose weight over the holidays just because you slept better? Yeah, right? Yeah. All right. How to get the greatest night of sleep of your life. And I am not joking. Let's start with some things uh, that I know affect. How about this one? Would you like to sleep 19% better? If you just made your bed, you would sleep 19% better. What? That's BS. No. I'm having a sleep in 14 years and I made my bed every day. Listen, listen, I'm not saying, I'm not saying, but watch this. Did you hear what she said? I've been making my bed for 14 years. I, I still have any issues. I'm not saying it's the cure all. I'm just saying across the board. If you didn't make your bed, you'd be 19% more likely not to sleep well. And, there, there, it's, and what happens is it's, there's, a, there's a cognitive dissonance that happens when you know that your bed is not prepared and nice and neat and inviting. So when you have a bed that is crisp and it's clean and it's going to be, it's like crisp sheets that are all ready for you and it's all turned down a little bit and it all looks inviting. Then it, you, maybe a chocolate on the pillow. And maybe a healthy chocolate on the pillow. But let me tell you, so watch this. And instead, you didn't have time this weekend to change your sheets and so they're a little bit dirty because you haven't changed them in a week and you didn't have time to make your bed and it looks like the dogs rummed up and rummaged in there, the kids played around and it's like you've got to like part of it's already untucked at the end and you don't like your feet to stick out so now you got to go over here. You see what I'm going? Mm -hmm. Just making your bed and making it inviting makes the whole thing better. 
Got it? And again, I'm just trying to give you the secrets, okay? So if you're not making your bed, start with that, okay? Um, does eating and drinking affect sleep? Yes, it does. Let's start with the first one, okay? Caffeine. Does it affect it? Yes. Not just if you don't, like, I feel, well, I don't, I don't drink caffeine in the morning. Well, the reason you're drinking caffeine in the morning is because you're tired and you're trying to get going. But what you don't realize, done regularly, and some of you guys drink coffee now just so you can have a bowel movement because it actually causes your bowels to actually contract, and that's, you don't have a bowel movement unless you drink a cup of coffee. Right? Now, you know who you are in the room, but the point is, if you're drinking caffeine in the morning to get going, it actually will deplete your adrenals eventually so that you will not be able to have as deep sleep and your brain doesn't shut down and so on and so forth. So this is not something you want to do regularly. Got it? It's okay to have it occasionally. I'm just saying don't be habitual about your caffeine consumption even in the morning. Sugar and carbs. It's a terrible time to eat sugar and carbs. Why? Come on. Do you need that energy going to bed? No. no. no? So guess what it turns into? Sugar. It turns into sugar, turns into fat because it's stored energy. But here's the other reason. Who here, just being honest with you, okay, well, this is a transparent room, it's a safe place. Who here has actually had a sweet tooth at night ever before in your life? Ever before. Come on, I was a pastor. You're going to lie to my face. So, <laughs> now watch. If you did that and it was really late, has anybody ever woken up with a headache after eating sweets or something in the evening time? <laughs> and it didn't have to. But what ends up happening, the reason for that is that when you eat late at night and you get your blood sugar to rise up and you go to bed, then basically you've got a rise in your blood sugar and you're not moving hardly at all. And so rather than just the usual crash that you get, you get a very hard crash and you wake up the next day in hypoglycemia, so low blood sugar, and it causes a headache, almost like a hangover. In fact, that's one of the biggest causes of hangovers. If you're drinking alcohol and gone to sleep and you wake up the next day and you feel it, it's because alcohol turns into what? Sugar and then it causes a rise in your blood sugar, and then you wake up the next day dehydrated and what? Hypoglycemic, so low blood sugar, and now you're really hurting, right? Are you with me? Yes. Affects sleep. You don't want to do those things, yes. I was told by another doctor that I, because I don't sleep, my problem, mm -hmm. to eat um, green apple before I went to bed. Because green apple, sugar yeah. levels will probably wake me up. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would... Well, the reason he says green apples because green apples don't have a high glycemic index rise, which is why it's on the advanced plan. But what you'd rather do if you want to try and maintain your blood sugar at night is you want to probably do a fat or a protein, a small amount. Got it? Because it will actually stabilize your blood sugar for a longer period of time. How many milligrams? Um, I would say between 20 or 30, something like this. And it depends on the person, the body weight, how active you are, your metabolic uh, processes everything else. But alcohol, I just talked about that one. Okay, now what affects great sleep? Let's just talk, let's take an example. Here's Bob, okay? Meet Bob. Bob has a holiday party. Anybody got holidays coming up? Come on, raise your hand. Okay, got holidays coming up. He's going to go to a holiday party for the office. He's going to have a couple things to drink. They've got snacks. He's going to have pigs in a blanket, some chips, a little bit of alcohol. Um, he's going to go home that night. He's going to put the kids to bed. He's going to grab his wife. They're going to get on the couch. They're going to watch a little bit of TV. They'll have a little bit more something to eat. Okay? Now, he's had all these carbs. He's had a little bit of alcohol. Now, he's going to go to bed. Okay? Now, when he goes to bed, he's going to turn all over the place because he really can't sleep very well. Right? You're laughing because that's what you do. It's like I took a picture of you. Click, 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 click. Now, about 1 a.m., he's going to wake up, and he's going to be, like, upset that he's not sleeping because he's still got work or whatever else, and he's going to take something. Okay? Now, I don't care if it's supplemental or it's pharmaceutical, but he's going to take something. Now, regardless, he wakes up the next day. How does he feel? Coffee. Oh, so he's going to drink a coffee, right? He's going to get himself going with a cup of joe. And he's going to get to the office, and about 10 o'clock, what's going to happen? Uh, so what's he going to do? Yeah, but now it's not the time of the day to have coffee. It's more socially appropriate to drink what? Now I'm going to have a Coke, right? But I'm going to be healthy, so I'm going to have a Diet Coke. And I didn't mean that if you're watching on the Internet. So he goes in. Now he's got more caffeine, so he's like this. woo -hoo! Joe's in the house. Joe's in the house, right? So now he's going, right? The problem with it is if he continues that, wait a second, if he continues that, what's his overall uh, aspect going to be? He's, he's driving himself from an empty tank. Would you agree? And literally 
Bob. Now, what we, we joke, it's kind of a bad picture. Um, but we joke, but this is what happens to a lot of you guys during the holidays, and you end up in January with serious sleep issues, weight issues, uh, I don't want to say psychological issues, but emotional issues, right? And sometimes diagnosed. You know, there's more people diagnosed with psychological issues uh, and, di and prescribed pharmaceuticals because of the holidays than any other time of the year. It's really sad. So it doesn't have to be that way. So there's better ways to do it. Now this is what we're going to get into. Ten ways. So if you're taking notes, here we go. Ready? Now you can take pictures with your phone. You can write it on here, but we're going to go through ten things. We're going to run through them fast. This is what I want you to get. This is the meat of the whole talk today. So here we go. You ready? Number one, nerve supply. Number one, first thing, nerve supply. The reason for that is if you have a compromised nerve supply, if you're subluxated, everybody say subluxation. subluxation. If you have subluxation and you've got a decreased nerve supply, you have a heightened sensitivity to pain. What does that mean? It means that I have things that hurt that should not hurt. So I go to sleep at night and my feet, which should not hurt for what I did today, are hurting. Or my knees hurt, or my hips hurt, or I'm laying on my shoulder and my shoulder shouldn't hurt by me laying on it. I haven't hurt my shoulder, but now my shoulder hurts, or my neck hurts. You guys are going with me? You shouldn't feel those things, but because you have a compromised immune or a, a nerve supply, now you have a heightened sensation. Does that make sense? Very simple. And now, on, just on top of that, now, because the nerve supply is compromised, brain uh, uh, function is overall compromised, and as a result, your body can't actually, go ahead, your body can't actually decrease your brain function enough to get you into deeper levels of sleep. Got it? Nerve supply is number one. Um, you can go days without uh, food, month without food, days without water, minutes without air, but a tissue in your body cannot go a second without a nerve supply. This is extremely important for you to know. Guys that are guests who've never had your nerve supply checked, whether you have something that hurts or not, you can have subluxation and not know it, and it needs to be checked right away. In fact, actually, guests, uh, I see a couple of guests in the house. When I'm done, they're going to talk to you about making sure you get an appointment. Got it? Okay. Um, but this is it. Some people don't even know that this exists. Do you realize that your back is like a uh, breaker board on your house? Like literally, I can walk through this. I had a, a new patient today and she came in. She didn't say anything about what was going on in her bowels. She said she had low back pain and she was talking about her female reproduction. And I go, yeah, it looks like your, your um, bowels are horrible too. And she looked at me like I like I was reading her mail or something, like I checked her emails or something, and I go, no, no, I'm, I'm just looking at your x-rays. Is, is that the case? She goes, absolutely. She goes, I had no idea. She goes, I didn't really believe you until now. She goes, no, nah, no, nah, I believe you, right? Like, <laughs> like I needed to like, be tricky or something. But the point is, this is why this has to get checked. Um, lots of research behind it. Decreased blood flow from abnormal posture. This is also why we see uh, restless legs sometimes, okay? Uh, but also, weakened immune system, organ disease, and there it is right there, increased sensitivity to pain, and Core, Urban Core in 1979, got a Nobel Prize for that. And he's not a chiropractor, which I love, by the way. Uh, also, if you just lost the curves in your spine, it takes almost 15 years off your life expectancy, and you guys didn't even have to see that on the news. No one's talking about that. Everybody's talking about getting your flu shot or getting your mammography or something, right? And nobody's even looking at this. So make sure this is a priority in your life. Okay, what are the warning signs? You guys that are patients, this is one of the re reasons you're here is because you had a warning sign. Uh, we don't want to wait till you have the warning signs. Uh, you guys that are taking pictures, what I want you to do is I want you to send that to your loved ones <laughs> and say if you have any of those, you have to lose 40% function in a tissue cell or organ before you can even have one of these. So you are already down well into disease, not just symptoms, by the time that you have that. Got it? Post it on Facebook, put it on Twitter, done. Got it? Everybody get it? One more, good. One more picture. Here, put the spine on there. It's prettier. <laughs> here we go. Let me take another one. Good. All right. Now, here we go. Good. What time? One more there. All right. Next thing. Uh, these. I love these. The reason I love these, these are prism glasses, and these are mine from home, so please give these back. Uh, I only have five of these in the office, okay? I think they're 25 bucks, um, but these are the ones that are big enough to wear over your, your uh, glasses. But you wear these, you wear these. 3D. They're not 3D. Can you see my eyes? No. Guess what I do? I lay in bed, and I read 
or work on my laptop. Yeah, I can sit in my I can sit down like this, look straight ahead, and work on my laptop and have a perfect curve in my neck. I can sit in bed and watch TV and be looking at the TV over there at, behind my feet and be laying in bed on my spinal molding rolls like this. I can read. I can do it. And I never have to have my head like this. Anybody ever read or watch TV in bed and you're on a pillow like this and you're like, oh man, my legs hurt. And all Anybody? Yeah. <laughs> Bing. Is that awesome? Merry Christmas, everybody. Right there. I only have five sets, so don't like wrestle each other at the back when you drive. Like, don't hit each other. We can order some more, some, and maybe get on a waiting list if you don't get them. But these are awesome. Got it? So make sure you get some of these. They're, they're great. They're called prism glasses. Okay? That'll help. Okay? Position. Here we go. We're going to solve the long time argue what's the best position to sleep in. Who here is, who here is the free faller? Anybody got any free fallers in the room? No stomach sleepers? Yeah, look at he's poking back at it. The reason that sleeping on your stomach is bad is because you have to turn your what? Turn your head. It puts an angle in your neck, and I can actually tell you which way you turn your head at night when you sleep by your x-rays, because it jacks your spine up. You don't want to sleep on your stomach. Also, starfish, probably not as bad, but your hands are up like this, and so a lot of times you lose nerve supply. I got some of it, right? And then uh, I'm going to say this is pretty good, but there's reasons it's wrong. Uh, the yearner, you're like this, right? He rolls the rolls this out. Um, the log, you know, this is probably me. Uh, I do a little fetus sometimes too, right there. Yeah. So all of them, yes. Yeah. So, because if you don't, like, if you don't sleep very well, this is all you, right here. So you're all over the place. So what is the best position? Okay, the best position, if you can be there, is on your back, um, on your spinal molding rolls. Okay. Uh, second best is on your side. Um, if you have a, a good mattress, like a Tempur-Pedic or something like this, then it actually cushions enough into your hip that you don't necessarily have to put in something between your legs. Uh, if, you do, if you have more of a traditional mat mattress, having something between your legs is, is oftentimes good. Also, you don't want to necessarily lump a, like a, a pelvic rotation in there as well. Also on your side, you need a good pillow. To I'm going to get to that next, yeah, because if you're on your side, you want to have support. So let me talk about that. So here, like on your side, you don't want your head to be down, and you, this is the most common problem. People have their head on a pillow, and it's up, right? So you're sleeping like this, but your head is up like this, so you're creating angles. Does it make sense? Yeah. Right? Or if the pillow's too low, you roll your shoulder, and then you're in like this, and this will cause... Another issue will cause rotation of the spine. It's linked to decreased immunity, lung issues, blood pressure. So this is a pretty good one. Now watch this. Here's, here's where most people get it wrong. People ask me so often, hey, what kind of pillow, here we go, ready? This is probably why you came tonight. What kind of pillow should I sleep with? And I have some people that have like 100 different pillows. Well, watch this. <coughs> It's not just supportive, it's not just, there's an, there's an absolute. What you need to do is, when you sleep, okay, your head needs to touch whatever your mid-back is touching. Your head needs to touch whatever your mid-back is touching. Now, some of you guys have gone so long that you have a mid-back that's rolled, I mean, literally. Like when you lay down and you're on a flat surface, your head does this. So I don't want you to sleep like that. That's the only people in this room that need to have a little bit of elevation for their head, okay? But if for everybody else, you want your head to touch the bed. And you want something underneath the what? The neck supporting the curve. What ends up happening is, this is an actual x-ray of a person a laying on their, on their back. And what you'll see is, this is their shoulder, here is their neck, and here is the back of their head. Now let me take your tempur pillow, you know the one that's got, it's got the thing like this, so it goes underneath your neck? But your neck is still elevated a little bit, right? So let me put that tempur pillow in there, see that? So this goes underneath your neck right here, and your head does go back a little bit, so maybe it's better than the big feather pillow, but the problem with it is, does any, if I turned you up this way, does anybody want an x-ray that looks like this? Nobody does. So why would you stay like that for six hours? You with me? This has to be back, got it, if you're going to sleep on your back. Now, I, I think everybody here needs to be on their spinal molding, mold, molding rolls every day. I can't sleep on them all night long. I'm just being transparent. So I'll stay on my spinal rolling molds as long as I can. And they're right next to my pillow, and then I'll turn over on my side. And I, it's, it's a pillow that's high enough that holds my head perfectly in line. Got it? Everybody with me on position? You got it? Okay. So what kind of pillow is it? 
that I sleep on, it's actually a Tempur-Pedic, <laughs> but the side that's up is the flat side. Yeah. Okay. Now write this down. There is a pillow called uh, Therapeutica. Therapeutica, and it's got a block on each side and a big space for your head to go down into it. So you sleep with a roll on like this, and then you turn over on either side, you, you turn over onto a block. Got it? So there's that one. I would probably cut that part out of the foam so your head would go all the way back, but that's just what I would do. Okay? No stowaways. Beds and kids, kids and kids and pets. Kids and pets. Now listen, I, I have been crucified for talking about this. If you're like a like a granola a parenting person who's very kid centric, they're like, we sleep with our children. It's biblical. <laughs> Listen, we don't live in one room bedrooms anymore and they wreck sleep. Listen, 80% of adults who sleep with their children have issues with sleep every single night and 53% of pet owners, right? You can't tell me you get good sleep. And listen, you want pets? Great. You want to love your pets? Awesome. I, I love pets. I got a dog. I love him. Sometimes I love him. Uh, actually, he just got groomed today. He looks awesome. But the point is, if that dog slept with us, it would drive me nuts. And I like him a whole lot more when he's not keeping me up. Got it? Right? Okay. So, uh, and listen, nobody wants to leave your pet behind when you die and you leave your pet here and so sleep well and then just take care good care of your pet okay again i don't get too crazy into it but no stowaways all right number four the right light the right light um you need sunlight that's why the seasonal affect disorder so you need sun like th this is a really important time of year not to wear sunglasses uh anytime you can get it you get you get that sun on your face i want you to park purposely when you go grocery shopping, all the way next to the street. And then walk like this when you go in. I guess. When you park at work, yeah, unless your neck hurts. So that's a big part. Get as much sunlight as you can. Um, at nighttime, you don't want light. Okay, when you sleep, if there's even a little bit of light in the room, it sub, even with your eyes closed, subconsciously, it keeps your brainwave patterns a little bit elevated. So who here has a cable box in your bedroom? If you have a cable box, some people don't, some people do. It's got that little light on it, even when it's off, it's yellow or whatever, that keeps it going. Who hears a smoke alarm in your bedroom, right? You better raise, if you don't have a smoke alarm, I'm gonna call the fire department on you. <laughs> you have to have a smoke alarm. This is a good time of year to check those too, by the way. Yeah. So, but watch this. If there is one in your bedroom, it probably has a green light on it, right? Red. Or, so you want red, if it's green, you want red. If it's green, just put a little piece of, um, uh, black tape on that. It's probably illegal for me to tell you that, so I didn't say that. Uh, but you want to cover up those light things. If you have an alarm clock, what color should the alarm clock be? Yeah. Red. Oh. Red. Yeah. Red. Why is red light okay? Red light is better because it's the slowest wavelength and it has the least activity causing to the brain. Actually, I had a lady who had a stroke who had tr she couldn't sleep through the night, but if she woke up when she went to the bathroom, it was a, there was a fall risk, so she had to turn the lights on. So what we did was we took a nightlight for children, taped part of it off, and used a red light from the hardware store, turned it on, left it on, and because it was just across the floor, basically, she literally um, didn't have any of the issues. She could go the whole time. Hold on, let me get Kleenex. She could go the whole time and not have issues. Does that make sense? So red light's the best. Blue. Okay. Blue is real fast. Yeah, you don't want blue either. Um, but you can also take, you can also take, um, tape. <laughs> tape, those things, you can cover it up with tape until it's really, but actually most alarm clocks now that you buy have dimmers on them, and so you can get them really, really dim, and so that's okay, yeah. What about children? Nightlight. I always get asked that. I'm glad you brought it up. Nightlight for kids. Kids who sleep with nightlights, actually a great psych study on children showed they had lower IQs because they didn't sleep as well, even when they didn't have, quote, trouble with sleeping because their brains actually didn't ha go through pediatric neurodevelopment as easy as other ones because their brain patterns were kept slightly awake with those nightlights. Um, kids have been through traumatic events. Sometimes you have to kind of go through seasons. Um, but... I think kids and nightlights, they don't go together. Like my kids, I've never allowed them to have nightlights ever or have doors open. That's not allowed in my house. And we're, you know, Jesus is in your room with you and it's going to be just fine. And, and so it's going to be okay. Got it? That's a good question too. So light needs to be as dark as you can get. Some of you guys can't handle it because you, you work nights and you sleep when? Days. You need to have a blackout room. I mean, it needs to be as black as possible. 
Got it. Sleep mask is good. Sleep mask is good. What's that? Black is good. Black is good. Dark, dark, dark. Yes, I love it. Dark, dark, dark. It's better, and you have better sleep. Masks are good too. Uh, there's the right mask though, and uh, Dorota had one today. I just I seen them. Most of them actually put a little pressure on your eyes. I don't like that. I don't like that. But there are some masks that are still soft masks that actually kind of they almost. Don't don't get weird on me, but they're kind of like a bra a little bit because it they kind of kind of a, like a cup, but it's still soft, right? And so, right? I'm not saying wear your bras. I knew you were gonna go there, but I'm saying I woke somebody up though. But but this is this is it. Got it? Okay. All right. So the right light, correct bedding. Listen, I know that looks inviting. It's all fluffy and squishy, and you could just jump into the sea of fluffiness. But that fluffy can be on top of you. That fluffy should not be underneath you. You do not want to be in bedding that's fluffy. Got it? It, should, it has to be firm to support you and your spine. Otherwise, you will wake up more. Uh, people get the sleep number beds, which I don't like those. Uh, you get the sleep number bed, and you end up having it down. It sh if you got a sleep number, it should, be under, it should be over 60 at the very least because it needs to be firm. Sleep number. Got it? Okay? Because you don't want soft and fluffy. Uh, what kind of bed? People ask me all the time. Uh, we, have, uh, some, we have a Tempur-Pedic, but this is probably the best one that I've ever seen. It's like a Tempur-Pedic. It's called an Evolution. It's memory foam, but it's non-toxic. The one thing by law they have to sell your bed with is they have to sell it with flame retardant. And flame retardant is a extreme toxic uh, it diffuses on you constantly, even if you've got sheets on it and all the rest. And so these uh, evolutions you can get made for the doctor's note. The, by law, you don't have to have the flame retardant on it, and it's a non-toxic memory foam bed. Also, they're covered in a material that has 13 different active minerals in it that actually, it basically reflects your body's... Um, I don't want to get too weird on you, but like energy, your body puts off like an energy um, signature. It actually reflects that back into you. So people that sleep on it actually uh, just think it's amazing, uh, it's just, but it's non-toxic. Got it? So uh, I'm not a bed salesman. I don't sell a lot of beds. I don't want to be a bed salesman, uh, but they were so good. They put them on the website. I didn't do it. Maximize Living did. So you can go to MaximizeLivingDrHerb.com and you can go buy a bed online. It'll deliver to you in about three weeks. Got it? That's where you get it. But don't buy a bed without getting a note from me because you don't have to pay taxes on it if you have a doctor's note. Got it? Okay. That's the bedding. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. What should the temperature be? You ready for this? Here we go. I got one of you that says it should be low. I got one of you that says it's too low. It should be high. And guess what? Here's the stats. This is, the, this is from the best sleeper, and they all agree that that temperature should be 68 to 72 degrees to be optimal. Now here's the thing, unless one of you has a medical condition like hypothyroidism, so too low, and you get cold easy. Got it. Now, in Texas, if you want to have a 68 degree room, you're going to pay a $9,000 electric bill. So how do you keep from doing that? Not so much cover. Well, not so much cover, but you can still keep the room cooler body temperature wise if you have a fan going. Got it? So you can maybe do like 74, 75, but have a fan going. Got it? So, ladies who liked it a little bit warmer, sorry I ruined it for you, but that is what it should be. Okay? Now, moving on, exercise. If I could increase your, if I could improve your sleep 65%, would you want to do it? Yeah. Now, stop for a second, you guys. Listen, if I had a pill, now imagine this, I've got a supplement up front, if you take this, it will improve your sleep 65%. You would be punching each other in the face to try and get that bottle up front. Seriously. It's, but when I say it's exercise, people are like, oh yeah, okay, it's exercise. Right? It's just, I mean, how hard would it be to put that Max T3 DVD in the video thing and to do that for 12 minutes? It's that simple. So 65% doing that. Also, if you just exercise 30 minutes a day, you decrease your likelihood of breast cancer by like 63%, right? I think that's worth it. So sleep, exercise. Eight, the right amount of time. What did we say it was a while ago? Seven, seven, to, seven to eight. Seven to eight. Adults. Adults, seven to eight. Yeah, kids are a little bit longer than that. They can be up to 10. Okay, which is really bad because kids have so much homework nowadays, it's nuts. We've been up, huh? Energy. Energy, yeah, right? So, the right amount of time should be seven to eight for adults. The right timing. Now, watch this. This is important. Everybody's going to the holidays. It's not just enough to get seven to eight. You need to have them at the exact same time. 
every day. Because, watch this, if you're going to bed at differing times, if you just change the time of sleep that you slept by 30 minutes, the next day your insulin sensitivity is decreased by 30%. So almost a third of your body's ability to utilize sugar, control your blood sugar, is gone if you just change your sleep pattern 30 minutes. Did you get that? What that means is, watch this, there's a couple reasons. An hour is not an hour is not an hour. If you go to bed at 10 and you sleep until 2, you're better off than sleeping, going to sleep at 2 and then waking up at 6. And it's because the hours between 10 and 2 are worth more than the hours after two. And it's because your body, God made you wonderful that when that sun goes down, your body's searching for when am I going, when am I going, when am I going down, when am I going down. We have artificial lights so you can maintain it, but if the lights were out completely long enough, you're searching for a bed. That's just the way that goes. And so it's the same thing. Your body wants to be out early and so those hours are worth, two, watch this, two to four times what an hour is afterwards. So the hour between 10 and 11 is worth up to four hours than what two to three is. Did you get that? Which is why if you ever go to bed at midnight and you wait and you go to, you, you sleep in, so wake, go to bed till 10 if you could even stay until bed till 10, 10, you still feel horrible. And it's because you missed what up to eight hours of sleep because the 10 to 2 is the best room that you'd get. Which is just why you, and some of you guys go, well, I don't put the kids to bed until you know, 10, 10.30, so I'm going to stay up and get a little me time, watch TV, right? Uh, and so you end up doing that, and you miss out on the, the critical magic window, the magic hour. And listen to, listen to me, the people in this room and anywhere watching on the Internet today, if you go to bed at 11 o'clock or later, your life expectancy be less. Take me to the bank. If you get to bed at 10 or earlier, I guarantee you a longer, healthier, more vibrant life with less health issues because it is that important. Got it? Now here's the other thing. You guys will go on the weekends and what do you do on the weekends? Because you, know, you don't have to get up. Stay we stay up late on the weekends and then we'll sleep in. Now listen, I'm, I'm guilty of this too. I have a date night on Saturdays with Kimberly and I like to go out. We go dancing and whatever, have a couple drinks or whatever else and so we're out and so we'll stay up late. And so I'll sleep in a little bit on Sunday. But the reason that's bad if you just continue to do those things is because what does Monday feel like if you stayed up and slept in on the weekends? That, right? Monday, actually, the reason that feels bad is because it actually it reboots your circadian rhythm, your internal clock. And so uh, 6 o'clock when you're supposed to wake up feels like 4 o'clock in the morning, right? And so then what do you do? You go get a cup of what? Kava coffee, and we start this whole sliding thing over again. Do you see how people get in trouble? All right, so timing's important. Last one. Here we go. Last one. Toxicity. Let me ask a question yeah. about sleep. Should you adjust your sleep time with the time you go to bed during daylight savings time in the winter? That's a good question. Um, the sun goes down earlier. You should. I can't say that I do. I'm just going to be transparent. Um, I, I just wish they didn't have daylight savings time, right? I hate it. There's so many people that just stopped it. Those countries stopped it. In general, I understand why. Like, but like in general, we had harvest time in the summer. Right? So imagine if we were all in an agricultural society again. We get up really early. We work until 8.30 at night. We go in, right? That's the way God made it so you can get a lot of harvest in. We store the harvest for the winter when things aren't growing. There's, there's not as much sunlight, so there's not as much work to do. And so we go to bed earlier. We sleep, right? Your body actually does need more sleep in the winter. It does need more sleep. So just keep that in mind. So good. I have one more Yeah. Do you dream on oh, dreams. I wake up and I, and I have drunk a bunch? Does that yeah. mean I didn't get REM sleep? Nope, not necessarily. Okay. Uh, she said, she said if, I, if I dream a bunch, does it mean I, did I not get REM sleep or does it mean you got more REM sleep on those nights? Uh, I have some people go, does it mean, is it a bad thing if I, if I never even dream at all? I feel like I haven't had a dream ever, right? Uh, it's, it's a, it's, there's a different, th it depends on who you read to. There's a lot of different studies on it. Some people say you don't ever dream unless you're in REM. And I don't think that's necessarily the case either. Um, some people say that if you're not dreaming, then you're not in REM or whatever. But the point is, I, if you don't write your dreams down to try and interpret what your brain is trying to do with them, you're actually, it, it, you only remember what's important to you. And so you'll literally kick it off, cut it off, and then you wake up and you don't have anything there. 
Make sense? So if you start journaling, if you want to dream, if you want to have dreams again and remember those dreams, start have a dream journal next to your bed and you'll dream every single night. Got it? So just, so if you want to dream, just have a dream journal. Or start writing down everything you can remember from your dreams and then you're, you'll start dreaming every night. And you'll have some funky dreams too, by the way. So, toxicity, yeah. <laughs> toxicity. You, listen, what's really crazy is, ask Kimberly, I'll go to bed at night and I just, ex I, sometimes I'm really tired physically and I'm just, in a mo inside I'm never tired because you guys are always energizing. But I get home at night and I get to bed and I go to sleep and she'll, uh, like, I, I start on my spinal molar rolls and then she, she's like right here on my side. And then uh, at some point in time, like she'll go over on her spinal molar rolls and I turn on my side. But inevitably, I'll be out here and I start adjusting all of you in my sleep. And so, I'll, like this. <laughs> Like last night, I swear to you, I adjusted somebody's mid-back, and I went like this, and I just whacked her like this. So pray for her. Um, so toxicity, this is a big component. Uh, and the reason it's big is because it affects brain function. It affects your brain's ability to shut itself down. Also immunity and a lot of other things also causes inflammation. So you have pain sensitivities that you shouldn't have. And I turn over this a little bit and it kind of wakes me up a little bit, right? So toxicity is a big issue. Where do you get it? It's everywhere. Like if I did a whole toxicity talk, you'd want to burn your house down. But what do you do? I mean, I mean it's in your, on your sheets. You wash your sheets in Tide and because you like the lemony smell or whatever. Like you burn uh, toxic candles in your house. Like, uh, listen, it's got lead in the wicks and stuff like this. But you can get non-toxic candles that are made with essential oils and, and uh, non-toxic wicks and things like this. Um, uh, everything. Here's, the, here's another toxicity issue. Listen, I never talk about this except for this talk. Listen to me. Some of you guys do a great job washing your bedding. Your bedding needs to be washed every single week without fail. Every single week. Okay? And then about every two to three months, you need to wash everything. Which means there's a little pillowcase that's underneath your pillowcase. Every two to three months. So at least every quarter. So you need to take your, the zipper, unzip the pillow, take that thing off because you'll build up oils and sweats and things that go through the pillowcase. And here's the thing. Dust mites eat that. Now, I'm not saying something that bites your skin like a, like a flea or tick or something. Dust mites ultra microscopic. But dust mites are related to everything from allergies to skin issues to decreased immunity to crazy digestive issues. And so you need to make sure that stuff is really clean. Got it? And so you need to clean your bedding at least once a quarter. Like your mattress probably has a zip thing that comes off too and you wash that every quarter. Got it? So if you haven't done that, make sure, make, I would start, and just put it on the calendar. This is when we're going to do it. Or set a timer on your phone for a reminder, you know, whatever, every quarter. Got it? Toxicity. Uh, I talk about it because you guys are exposed to it. Some of you guys have never done anything about it. But the, your body always takes care of toxins. But it takes it to the liver. And what happens is it goes from the cell. We get it out. goes to the liver. You basically get that out through the bile, which goes into your, your large intestine. And you poop that out the next morning. This is how 85% of your um, detoxification happens. What is happening is because we have so many really crazy toxins with 100 different letters in them, uh, they're so complex. They actually attach themselves to bile. Your body actually recycles it, goes back to the liver, and you retoxify. It goes right back to the cell again. 85% of toxins nowadays actually are recycled constantly. And you guys become more and more toxic, and you think it's just your aging. Wait, but it's not. you got to back up. Why does it go from the GI to the liver? And back. And it's because it doesn't actually go out. Your body recyculates, recirculates bile because it wants to reuse and be efficient. And so what happens is rather than actually be bound into the fecal material, it actually reabsorbed with bile through the, the uh, colon itself because it's such a complex thing. Your body can't uh, deal with it. It's just, it's not even seen. It's not even on radar. And so it goes right back into your system again, right back to the liver, and it goes right back into your cells again. And this is why people have uh, their gallbladders removed and stuff like this. I just had a lady do a gallbladder flush this weekend. She, I kid you not, bigger than a quarter. She had a gallstone come out bigger than a quarter, and she said she had hundreds of gallstones come out. If you've never flushed your gallbladder, it might be a good idea, but an easy way to do it that needs to be done regularly is just do something like this. This is why we have this. Uh, it's something that actually cellularly brings all the toxins across the cell. And then actually there's two products. There's one that's a cell detox and one's a body. The body's got activated charcoal and psyllium husk and these things. So when you take this at night, it has all the things that bind everything in your digestive tract at night so nothing recirculates and comes back around again. Thank <laughs> you.
Does that make sense? That's why a lot of you guys started losing weight. I had one guy lost 18 pounds in a month taking this stuff. And it's just because all the toxicity is locked into your fat. And then when your body starts getting rid of it, you start losing weight. Got it? I have a question. Um, when you take the calm with the magnesium mm -hmm. night, how soon should you take that before you take the detox? Good. How soon should you take the detox and the calm together like this? Uh, I'll drink my calm probably 30, 40 minutes before I get in bed. And then I take the, it's the last thing I do when I'm turn off the lights. Boom. I drop the, drop the body detox behind it. And I take it every single day. Yeah, I take the calm before. Yeah. Yep. Because the calm goes right in. Are you saying the detox system is something you do constant or just every day? It depends. It depends. Uh, I've had so many friends come up with cancer that it turned out it was just a toxicity issue. And I've, I've been through so much um, that I'm never going to take the chance. I would say the average person at least needs to do like three months of this a year. Right? It's, a, it's a one month supply. Um, it's Again, it's 10% off if you're doing that tonight. Some of you guys don't buy it until you come to a workshop, so make sure you get some. I bought extra. But I would say at least three times a year so you can uh, flush everything out. That's what I've always heard, but it sounded like Why stay on it nonstop? Just because of the stuff we're exploring. We travel a lot. So. All right, so let's, here it is. Here's the list. Take a picture. Everybody take a picture. Here's the 10 things. Here it is. To get it? There we go. Post it online. That's how you get it. There's Bob. I put Bob's picture in there again. I feel like Bob sometimes. All right, now, a couple things. Great sleep starts with function. If you're a guest, we want to make sure that you guys get checked. Okay, so the team will make sure they get that scheduled tonight. Um, listen, I don't want you to stay here much longer. Uh, I started late. I'm finishing on, basically on time. Uh, but it shouldn't take 15 minutes for every single person to get your products. If you fill out your product order form here, so just circle the things that you want, okay, and then hand it to them. Also, within about two weeks, we're going to post this online. And so you'll be able to see this again, and um, it's free. Just go to Herb Family Wellness online, the YouTube channel, and you'll be able to see this again or send it to your family and your folks. Here's that. Listen, coming up, uh, we've got a dinner coming up on the 7th of December, and it's going to be our big event of the year for our community dinners for all of you to come. So make sure you guys are planning on that, okay? You and your, your guests. This is the one for all your family and friends you've been talking to all year, right? So that's, there's, um, you guys should have had some flyers if you didn't get them there around the office. Uh, and last but not least, pictures with Santa, the 19th of December. And listen, here, and listen, I can hear you. I don't have any kids at my house. Why would I be coming for pictures with Santa? Well, guess what? Number, four, number one, I'm not Santa. There is going to be a Santa here, and I want your picture with Santa. Did you hear what I'm saying? I'm pointing to you, whoever's, uh, and you, if you're looking online, I want you here for the 19th, because I take pictures of you guys with Santa every year, don't I? Right? And these are the things that I keep for me from now on. I'm going to look at this in 50, 60 years from now, um, hopefully when I'm still adjusting, but if I can't adjust, and these are the things that I'm going to cherish more than you can possibly imagine. I don't even care if your kids aren't in the picture. The two guys are going with Santa going, like Dr. David told me to stand in with Santa, like this. And so make sure you're there for that day. Also, we're going to do it different this year. We're going to give away, I think, a big screen TV. Uh, so a monster TV to give somebody for, for um, Christmas. Uh, we're going to do that. We're going to give away like raffle tickets for that when you guys bring people in uh, to dinners and they make appointments as, as new patients. Uh, so we're going to give away raffles for that. We're going to give away a huge TV that day. And so make sure you come in for Santa Day for a picture with Santa and me. Got it? And I and I wear I wear my Santa stuff too. Got it? All right. So guys, thanks for being here. Make sure you don't forget about this. This was not on your sheet, I don't think, right? But there's only five of these. So any questions? No questions? We good? All right, let's do this. If you would bow your heads, we'll pray it up. Okay, give me a second. No question? Go ahead, James. Oh, good. He said, what effect does the detox have on medications? It does have an effect if you're taking nightly medication. So if you take meds at night when you go to bed, um, if you take that charcoal, that body detox, 
with it right at the same time, you won't absorb any of that medication. And so it, it will, you won't, it'd be like you never took it. And in fact, actually, that's why when you go to the emergency room, if you ever OD'd, I worked at the business emergency in the United States, we had teenagers try to kill themselves and take too many, take a bottle of drugs, pills. What'd, they, what'd we give them? We got them activated charcoal. It's the same thing because it binds everything and you won't absorb it. So it literally binds it up. And so you don't want to take medication and that body detox at the same time. Two hours. So uh, two hours, I, I think it's probably within 45 minutes to an hour, but she wants to be safer legality wise probably so you want to be probably a couple hours away from it. So that's a really good question. What, what about drinking the calm then with, with that? Now I have 30 minutes. That's 30 minutes. Nope. That. I take mine. I've, I've actually taken it at the same time. Actually, because I forgot to do that, mm -hmm. I'll sometimes take my <laughs> my body with my calm just because it's the only thing I could do. But it's probably drink your calm 30 minutes before and then take your body. Got it? Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Like I have issues, you know, for many years with my sleeping problem. Now, what supplement? What would you suggest if I want to give up caffeine, mm -hmm. but I have to work or do something? How? can help me to give me energy that is natural. Um, green tea or green coffee extract? Huh? Green tea doesn't do anything. Not green tea. It's um, green coffee extract. extract. Green coffee? There is a, what, what uh, supplement do we have that has it in there? It's got guarana root and Max Fit? Max Fit. Max Fit has it in there. I, I have that. And so that's a good one. Um, here's the thing, if your adrenals are, are depleted enough, mm -hmm. then there's not a lot you can do because basically the only thing that will give you that feeling is someone kicking your adrenals. Mm -hmm. And so, honestly, until you until you get it turned back around but again. It's a cycle. It is a cycle. I so I kick that adrenal every time. I don't sleep, so I, my adrenals don't work, and I don't sleep. Then, you, know. it, you, might, it, you might be six, eight weeks dragging your wagon until you get it to come back up on you. What you can do is this. The best thing is do adrenal support. We have adrenal energy here. Yeah, I, I had that. And do adrenal energy, and then just get rid of anything and anything that's just draining your adrenals. <laughs> and so if you can do that, and then go long enough, then you should be fine. fine. Got it. So let's do this. I'm going to pray it up, and then my guest, I want you to see um, Dr. D here. She'll make sure that you get uh, scheduled. So if you will, let's just bow your heads. Father, we just love you and praise you. Thank you for being here and uh, loving us enough to lead us and constantly show us new things and how we can live victoriously in the skins that you have us living in. Uh, I ask a blessing on every single person here that the uh, information wouldn't just be information, but it'd be revelation. And because of that, we can live victoriously and be an example for every single person, that every person can live a life free and healthy and great. So God, we just thank you in advance for what you're going to do for us as we make these changes. We ask a blessing every person here and everybody that partakes, that they are a blessing to everyone else. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.